Welcome back to Truck Central. I'm Mr. Justin Wheeler and this is the 2019 Ram 1500 Limited High Mileage Edition. Now I don't typically record a video before I shoot the intro like I'm doing now, but the situation just presented itself where I had a little bit of trouble on the road and I kind of wanted to catch it in real time and kind of let you guys know how I worked through this issue and problem and ultimately what is, we're okay, I made it back to town, but it was something that I hadn't expected and uh, it's apparently pretty common. I guess I've gotten lucky that in the last 10 plus years of Ram ownership, I've never ran into this issue before. Now, I don't know a whole lot about it. Maybe it's specific trim levels. Maybe it's just 1500s and not 2500s where I have a majority of my windshield time. Uh, let me know if you know the specifics around it. But uh, I was a little nervous there for a minute, but we made it home. Thank goodness. So enjoy. Now I don't typically record and drive like this, but I just wanted to show you something. The truck is not shifting. I got these weird lights on my dash. So what happened was, is my truck, the battery was dead, so I jump started it. I've never had to jump start this truck before in the two years I've been driving it. Jump started it, and now all these weird lights are on, collision alert lights, traction control lights on, even though my traction control, I haven't touched the button, and now it's not shifting. I'll keep you posted. So I just power cycled the truck, just shut it off and turned it back on. Let's see if it'll shift now. Shift, pig. You can see it's still in first gear if you look next to the gear selector indicator. Wow. This is not good. So I did a quick Google search and they say that when you have these stability control uh, check engine lights, Apparently what happens if you run your battery dead and you don't charge it all the way, it's not uncommon for the transmission to stay in first gear until you charge the battery to 100% or get a new battery and then also clear the check engine codes. Uh, well, I'm on the side of the road here and uh, don't really have a way to... Uh, charge the battery all the way so let's look at the diagnostics here and see if this tuner can help us out of a jam see if we've got any codes here I might have to shut the truck off no trouble codes available let me turn it off Try again. No trouble codes. Trouble codes have now been cleared. Service electronic stability control. Service trailer brake brake system. Oh my god. This is a huge problem. Like I'm not stranded. 600 miles from home, thank God. But if I was, man, I'd be pissed. I'm still pissed. I got a birthday party to get to. All right, let's see if I can figure this out. Well, this is kind of a humbling experience, I guess. I've been driving Ram trucks for, well, 11 years consecutively. Oh, let me slow down. I need to stay in first gear. Um, and I've never had this problem happen before in anything and I, I did a quick 
uh, Google search, like I said, I got on the forums, and I guess this has been a thing for a long time. You let your battery discharge too low, and you don't come out of first gear. And it's, I guess it's a pretty well-known thing that it has just completely evaded me all this time. I guess I've been up to snuff on uh, doing frequent battery changes. I don't know. But, uh, so now I'm driving back to the house to get a backup vehicle. And I guess I'm going to go grab a battery and put it in. And I hope that fixes the problem because, well, I got to work tomorrow. Thank God I'm on my day off today. But uh, yeah, the I got a bunch of check engine lights. And I'm sitting here rolling at three grand on the tack. 20 miles an hour going up a hill. So I'm going to limp this baby back to the house. We'll get a new battery. And I'm going to, I guess, cross my fingers. Hope that fixes it. So I limped this thing back to the house. After I'd power cycled it three, four times. Tried to check the engine codes. It sucked. It was trans was getting hot, engine was getting hot. It didn't like it. Fine. Got back, pulled the brazer out. You know, got it fired up, aired up all the tires because I don't drive it often. Topped off the fluids because I don't drive it often. And I, I had some. My mirror fell off. I had to fix the mirror. This thing is getting neglected. But anyway, I was gonna take it. And before I pulled the battery out, I thought, well, let me put my voltmeter on this thing. And sure enough, it was at 13 plus volts. And I thought, man, are, what's going on with this, right? So I said, I'm gonna start this one more time and see what happens. All my alarms went away. All my check engine lights that were, whatever was the problem keeping me from shifting, is fine now and I guess I'm gonna try to take it down the road look at that I am wrecking that air cleaner intake I think it's probably time to clean that element what do you think doing a good job though all right I'm gonna try to get back on the road see if we still have the same problem I have done nothing other than drive back let the truck sit and I started it again well would you look at that she's shifting hey -o. I don't know what in the world I mean I don't agree with it but I get it if the battery is low it needs to be addressed for all the accessories to work that's fine but what I don't get is the irrational method of it working and then not working it just doesn't make sense I suppose maybe the drive back those high rpms charged the battery just enough to tell the truck that it was ready for duty I don't know but well, here's what I do know I don't like it that old blazer back there I start that thing once every six months and guess what every time I turn the key it takes me down the road whether hell I could take the battery out of it and take me down the road so not uh, not upset with the truck, more upset with the situation. I don't even know why the battery got low to begin with, but shows here we got 13.8 volts as we're driving, of course. Uh, and then it's a little over 13 with the, with the alternator and the truck turned off. I'm gonna go ahead and replace the battery anyway. I can't afford to risk uh, being stranded somewhere in first gear. We'll go through that. I'll, I'll do a... Uh, a load test on the battery that's in it now and we'll see maybe there's some damaged cells in there or something to be continued so I get it it's a it's a safety thing right uh, the truck doesn't want you to go fast if it doesn't feel like all the safety features and sensors are powered up enough to do their job so basically the truck is in limp mode uh, I don't know if this truck actually has a limp mode uh, but it, it lets you be mobile without letting you get on the highway without all of your electronic stability controls and all those other crash detection sensor things. Um, so I get it. I don't necessarily agree with it. I think that there should be a way to manually override that in the situation where a 
you've got low battery voltage. I just don't get it because my battery voltage wasn't that low. It seems like a weird deal. I don't even think I left like a light on. My, my truck has never not started when I push the button and this time it did. And then as soon as I jump started it, I had these problems. So hopefully it's not a not an ongoing issue. Maybe I did leave a light on and the battery was just drained and it just took a while to get those RPMs up and get that, ju get that juice boosted back up enough to start. So what I am gonna do, go get a new battery just to be on the safe side. And I'm also probably gonna go ahead and go get one of those boost packs. I carried one years ago, uh, but I just haven't had a need for one in a while. And I think they make good ones now, small, real powerful units. The one I used to have was the size of a bowling ball and it weighed about the same. Uh, anyway, get the battery swapped, get back on the road. Dusty Dodge is back in service. Thanks for watching.